Hello. The purpose of today's video is to go over the forest, land, and agriculture GHG protocol guidance and SBTI requirements. We'll focus today's presentation on the who, the what, and the when of setting science-based targets using the new draft GHG protocol guidance for FLAG. The new guidance for GHG protocol provides a step change in cor corporate GHG accounting. Whereas before the guidance, there was a gap of emissions generating activities from the land sector, this guidance fills that gap and provides full coverage of corporate GHG emissions. The science-based target initiative launched the FLAG project in January of 2020 and has recently released final guidance. This guidance works in tandem with the GHG protocol guidance to provide uh, a full series of recommendations for measuring flag emissions. Currently, the GHG protocol guidance is in draft form, and we expect the release of the final guidance in mid-2024. There is a final and usable version of the science-based target initiative target setting guidance that was released in September 2022. Both of these sets of recommendations have been working in tandem and complement one another. And uh, clients should leverage both when putting together their GHG inventory. Uh, in addition to being highly aligned, the GHG protocol uh, draft sector guidance supplements the recommendations and requirements provided in the science-based target initiative guidance. Companies that have set a flag target prior to any flag revisions will need to set new flag targets outside of their regular SBTI target update cycle of five years. We'll talk more about the SBTI timeframe in a few slides. Now, when calculating flag emissions, the land sector and removals guidance builds on the existing DHG protocol standard, where setting the organizational and operational boundaries follow the same requirements. What's new is that the land sector and removals guidance introduces three accounting categories that are specific to flag. Those are land use change emissions, which are emissions associated with direct and indirect land use change, such as deforestation or the transition of natural grasslands to agricultural land. Land management emissions, these are emissions related to the management of land, for example, from the use of fertilizers and farm machinery or manure management. And the third category covers carbon removals, which allows companies to account for carbon that has been sequestered on lands within the value chain or stored in products and geological storages. It is important to note that carbon offsets are not included in this, and to account for these removals, it will require primary empirical data, which will be subject to availability. Next to the three accounting categories, there are three major components to any flag science-based target. First, a flag target, just like an energy science-based target, will require the company to abate its emissions associated with flag by, for example, changing land management practices or reducing the amount of land use change it is involved in. Secondly, as we just learned, companies can include carbon removals towards their target achievement, which is a component that is unique to flag targets. And another unique component to any flag target will be the no deforestation commitment, which every company submitting a flag target will need to sign. This commitment is separate from the accounting for any land use change that might include deforestation. Under this commitment of the flag target, companies will commit to no deforestation across their primary deforestation linked commodities with a target date of no longer than 2025 and a cutoff date, meaning the date after which the company should have no further deforestation in its supply chain of 2020. All companies in flag designated sectors are required to set a separate flag target in addition to their energy industry target. Also, companies in any other sectors with flag emissions contributing to more to 20% or more of their total greenhouse gas inventory across scopes are also required to set a separate flag target. The companies that have flag emissions contributing to less than 20% of their total emissions are recommended to set a separate flag target. If they decide not to, the flag emissions still must be calculated but they can be included under energy or industry science-based target. 
in that case, removals cannot be accounted for. And what is the flag timeline? So companies must follow flag guidance if they are in the process of setting science-based targets for the first time or those who are recalculating their target for any reason. This requirement has been enforced since May 2023. Companies with existing science-based targets must add a flag target within six months after the release of the final version of the Greenhouse Gas Protocol for Land Sector and Removals. That protocol is expected in mid-2024, so uh, we assume that those companies will have to oblige by the end of 2024. If you think that FLAG applies to you and you want to be sure you have a right understanding, feel free to reach out to us. We can support your learning about FLAG and provide technical support and advisory to calculate FLAG emissions, set targets and define FLAG decarbonization strategy. Thank you.